Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started um, with Luis Gomez, who's going to introduce us to our translation services this evening. Um, so Luis, can you um, go ahead and get started with kind of providing some background information about those who want to participate in another um, channel for Spanish language interpretation? Perfect. Thank you, Mallory. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Luis Gomez. I'm here as a Spanish interpreter with the Community Language Cooperative. And today we're going to be using a simultaneous interpretation feature through Zoom. Once we turn it on, you'll see a small globe appear on the bottom right hand of your screen if you're on a computer. If you're on a cell phone or a tablet, you can click on the three dots where it says more and the interpretation feature will be there. Uh, there you'll be able to select if you wish to participate in English or in Spanish so that we're all able to listen, participate all in the same way and be able to do so in the language of our heart, the language that we speak with our families. Muy buenas noches, mi nombre es Luis Gómez, estoy aquí con la Cooperativa Comunitaria de Lenguaje como intérprete de español. El día de hoy vamos a usar una función de interpretación simultánea a través de Zoom. Cuando la activemos, verán la imagen de un mundo o un pequeño globo terráqueo aparecer en su pantalla si están en un, una computadora. Si se nos une por un teléfono celular o una tableta, puede seleccionar los tres puntos donde dice más. Ahí podrá encontrar la función de interpretación. Podrá seleccionar si desea participar en inglés o en español para todos poder participar, escuchar de la misma manera y hacer un idioma en nuestro corazón, el que hablamos con nuestras familias. Si tienen cualquier pregunta o problema durante la reunión, nos podemos comunicar por el chat. If you guys have any question throughout the meeting or any issue, we can communicate via the chat. We can now turn on the interpretation feature again. Please select the, your preferred language. I'll test that both channels are working and we'll be all set. Vamos a activar la función de interpretación. Verificaré que ambos canales funcionen y estaremos listos. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Luis. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and get started with um, just some introductions, just to make you aware of who we all are. Um, this is the first community meeting for the 47th and Wall. Uh, park master planning process. So thank you so much for being involved. I'm Mallory Royval. I'm the East District Planner with Denver Parks and Recreation. And with us this evening are our team from S Stream Landscape Architects, um, Carrie Liljegren and Paul Thomas. Um, so they'll be presenting today as well, or this evening as well. Um, and then as, as you already met, Luis Gomez is gonna be our interpreter. I wanted to make a special, uh, put out a special thank you to the council office. I believe Megan is here. So thank you so much, Megan Ellens for attending and uh, representing the council office. We really appreciate your involvement and really pushing for this project for your community. Yeah, for sure. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to make you aware that um, there is a chat feature that you can put in any questions you have, um, the, the chat's accessible at the bottom of your screen. So throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to go ahead and type that in. Um, but if you, we'll, we'll have periods of time throughout the presentation where we will go ahead and answer some of those questions. Um, we will also have some questions and answer um, period at the very end of the presentation as well. So feel free to put in a question throughout the whole presentation. Yeah, and sorry to interrupt, but the chat function is not working at the moment. I'm going in the back end and trying to figure it out. So if it, it'll hopefully appear, otherwise jot some note questions down as we're going, if it doesn't, and we can have time to ask questions. That's a good point, Laura. If we can't figure that out, um, we will go ahead and open it up to maybe raising hands and vocalizing our questions at the end if that, if the chat feature does not function for us. So thank you, Laura. So a little bit about the project background, I wanted to go ahead and just kind of give an, over, uh, an overarching view of the project. Um, this is a neighborhood park. So what we're doing is reaching out to you as this community led process to help design or help shape some of the, the programming for the park, really what the community wants to see in the park. Um, this was a, a property that was acquired back in 2008. It's 13 acres of land. So it's a substantial area that we'll be designing. So it's, it's really up to you as the community to decide what you really want this park to be and how you want it to serve your, your community, the surrounding um, schools and kind of the, the new development as well as the existing residents there. Um, it's just an exciting process to be involved at this early master planning phase. So thank you for participating. 
Um, I'd like to also emphasize that this project is really part of the game plan for a healthy city. Um, in, in this particular case, we're really looking at the gains we're making in access to park space and recreation opportunities. So developing this park will really open up some more recreation opportunities for you as a community. So we're very excited about this. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to Paul from Stream. Thank you, Mallory. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the site uh, location, the little red symbol shows where we are in the uh, north or east metro area just a bit uh, north of I-70 and a little bit east of Pena Boulevard, which is that, that um, line just to the left of the symbol and very close to Tower Road. Uh, Sorry, I don't know where, here we go. So the next slide, please. This zooms in a little bit on our site. You can start to see that just to the east of the park site is the KIPP uh, Northeast Elementary and uh, Middle Schools. Uh, you can see in the image, you can see Pena Boulevard off to the west, the light rail lines, and just to the north, Green Valley Ranch Boulevard. Um, so yeah, a lot of the neighborhood uh, that will surround the site is not uh, there right now. Uh, we thought we'd give you a little aerial tour. Next slide, please. To give you a sense of what the site looks like. So here we go. We're, we're not seeing the screen right now, so we need to share the screen. You're not seeing the screen right now? Not seeing the screen right now. How about now? Um, no, we're just seeing all the nice participants. There we go. <laughs> Apologies. There we go. It's Now it's going. Okay, so we're looking west. The site is right in our foreground. You can see that's, uh, oop, we turn around. Now we're heading back to the east. There's a school on, on the left foreground, the drainage channel. As we get close to Walden Street, that is going left to right in front of us. And now we're looking north, we're backing away from the site. You can see Telluride Street on the left and 45th right on the bottom of the screen. And the drainage channel that defines the southern and part of the west edge of the property. Thank you. Next slide, please. We're going to do a little bit of a site analysis, just show you some of the features of the site. Um, as soon as we switch out the video for the, the slides. Okay. Clark, you, you stop and I go? Yep. Okay. Thanks for your patience on these transitions. There we go. Okay, so the next slide, please. I did want to say, uh, before we got started on the site, I uh, wanted to just outline the public process that we hope to follow throughout this project. You can see uh, we've been doing some initial data gathering and mapping. And now you see where the, the black box is. That's the first public meeting. Uh, we will have, so, so in the public meeting today, we really are hoping to gather ideas and information from you, the public, to share what your thoughts are about this park. Uh, in April, the second public meeting will be held. And in that meeting, we will come back to you with some design concepts and plans uh, to provoke your thought and get your feedback. Uh, and then after we get your feedback, we will refine uh, one uh, concept and present that to you in June. Uh, 
we'll hope to get more feedback from you then. And then we will take, take those uh, comments, revise our plan. And then the final master plan will be posted on the Denver Parks and Recreation uh, website and we'll provide you with information to get on that website and review the final plan and, and give us uh, even more feedback at that point. So yeah, next slide, here's the goals of the meeting. Uh, we really want you to start to understand the site. It does have some very particular features that will affect its design. Um, we want to talk about uh, possible activities and improvements and features that we could build in, into this park. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about next steps. Uh, I've already sort of outlined the public process, but um, actually, I'll, I'll jump to the last one. We will be uh, introducing you to a, an opinion survey that will show um, a lot of the, especially the activities that we show on in this presentation. You will be able to go into that survey and provide us with your opinion on whether the various activities are what you would like to see, or if there are other things that you would like to see included. So that's the goals for the meeting. And now we'll jump into looking at the site, um, the site features. Oh, to start our analysis, we looked uh, around the far Northeast neighborhood, kind of from Montbello to Green Valley Ranch and and uh, and looked at the public facilities, parks, schools, uh, those types of things that are already providing recreational amenities to the existing neighborhoods. You can see obviously off in Montbello, there's Parkfield Lake Park, which is a, a major facility with football fields, soccer fields, skate park, tennis courts, playgrounds, spray grounds, baseball, a lot, a lot of things, rec center. Um, and then as you get more on, under this uh, east side of Pena Boulevard, uh, the big or the orange colors are school facilities. The big orange outlines just to the north of the site are the EV uh, Dennis uh, uh, campus, excuse me. And then as we get a little bit west of the site, uh, up at the, the northwest, northeast corner, there's First Creek Park, which has a nature playground and uh, creek access. The Green Valley Ranch Town Center Park and Rec Center, which has multi-use sports fields, uh, skate park, playground. And then below that, the Green Valley Ranch West Park, playgrounds, basketball, turf area, and then a couple of the Marama Elementary and Ensenada Park, which have playgrounds. I guess Marama Elementary has a community garden. So that's just good information for us to start with so that we think about other amenities that maybe the community does not have at this point that will augment the recreational and cultural opportunities uh, in this part of the city. Next, please, next slide. There's some exciting uh, parks, uh, excuse me, trails, regional trails that are planned uh, very nearby our site. You can see the our site is the green space in the middle of this map. Uh, you can see that there is a big orange line off to the northwest uh, that represents the Derby Lateral Trail, which exists uh, pretty much from, um, from the north area near Parkfield Lake Park all the way to uh, Pena Boulevard. Uh, it is planned to continue and go right adjacent to our site. And then continue, we're not exactly sure on the route that would continue to the south and the east, but it will 
follow one of the two uh, kind of options that we're showing, in which case, and then it'll go along Tower Road and eventually connect into the Highline Canal Trail, which will connect our park to all of the important regional greenways and trail systems in the metro area. In fact, I, I know that uh, I think the city of Aurora is looking at the connection under I-70 and looking to build that even in the next few years. So it's an exciting time for the trail connectivity in this area. Next slide, please. So zooming into the park site, so you can see our park site is outlined with the, the white dashed lines and the school is just to the right. Um, basically, we've got a very a site that is is it does not have a lot of existing trees or vegetation. The main features right now are the drainage channel along the south edge of the park, the blue line that goes along the bottom. Um, and that continues all the way up towards um, towards Parkfield. Uh, we also have a an old irrigation ditch called the Derby Canal that uh, just hits the, the southwest corner of the park and continues kind of to the south of the, of the project. And then we've got uh, some pretty steep topography of steep slope going down from 45th, which is the borders the southern edge of the park, and goes down to the drainage. Um, some of the other features that are important are uh, features that some of the, the school features. The school is, was uh, built maybe two years ago, so these are very new facilities. There's uh, the green square there is the artificial uh, turf multi-sports uh, field. Uh, then at the south edge of the school is a softball field. And then there are also uh, in the interior of the school grounds, there are uh, there's a basketball court and playgrounds. Um, uh, might mention uh, just obviously the site as is the neighborhood is not fully developed and you can see on the west side of Telluride Street, uh, that kind of reddish color designates uh, uh, future mixed use, which is includes residential and may commercial and office space and may have some slightly taller buildings than the adjacent neighborhood shown in, in the yellow color, which are mostly single family uh, houses, one story or, or two story houses. Um, the high point of the site is along the east side where that little uh, white arrow symbol is. And then we've highlighted that yellow zone that we call the school park interaction zone. Uh, and what that designates is an opportunity to create a, um, a unique and interesting transition between the school and the park that makes, uh, that adds value to both the park and to the school. So we're looking for a real uh, community asset that combines the school, the park, and really uh, becomes a social hub for the neighborhood. Uh, next slide, please. This shows the vegetation and the drainage, and the drainage basically just shows you know, which way the slopes uh, slope down. And obviously the slopes, uh, slope to the drainage, which is along the south edge. Um, most of the yellow areas is, is a natural sort of a upland or dryland grasses and vegetation. There are some uh, riparian areas along the channel that get more water and some wetlands uh, right in the channel bottom with some uh, some trees starting to grow. This, this is a fairly new channel that was part of the development work. And uh, you can see the little uh, dark circles are where some trees are starting to grow. Uh, so that's, that's our, we, we have 
pretty much of a blank slate in terms of much of the site, in terms of what we can do with it. Next slide, please. Finally, uh, access and circulation. Uh, the drainage, the drainage channel and the uh, irrigation ditch on the southern part of the site start to uh, create some interesting access challenges. Uh, we can access from that side, but we'll have to figure out how to get uh, walkways and trails down that side. Right adjacent to the neighborhood streets is along uh, Telluride Street on the northwest corner of the site and along 47th Avenue on the north side of the site. Um, so, so that starts to give us some big cues as how we organize the site. There's also obviously connection points from the, the KIPP school. Um, that we will be taking into account as well. And then I think, do I have one more slide? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, we've got a couple slides here. I know we've just had the video, but this gives us a little more of a, <laughs> of a controlled access view. This is looking east from, that's uh, Telluride Street in the foreground and 45th on the right. In the, Kip School with the uh, turf, multi-sport playground, um, sports field in the in the middle of the of the picture. Next slide, please. The drainage in the foreground. Yes. Uh, this we're looking more southeast. You can see the school edge and the drainage off on the right in the foreground. Next slide, please. Now we're looking west. And you can see off in the distance, right at the edge of our site is Telluride. If you keep looking west, you can see the Derby ditch kind of move, zigzagging through the field. Uh, you can see the light rail bridge over Green Valley Ranch. And a little further in the distance, you can see Pena Boulevard. Um, and I think we've got one more image of the site. Okay, now we're looking north, right from the southwest corner of the park, and you can see the drainage. On the far left is the irrigation ditch. And then you can see the mostly level uh, middle part of the site, the, uh, the new neighborhoods that border to the north. Uh, so I think with that, uh, we've wrapped up the site, uh, the introduction to the site, and um, I guess I'm going to ask Laura, did we did we get the chat functions to work or are we going to wait to the end? So it looks like we got the chat to work for some. So if you are not seeing chat and you really want to use chat and see what we're, your neighbors are saying, I would recommend logging out and logging back in. I will let anybody back in that logs out, um, but I am seeing Myra and Christina responding to my chat, so I feel like a few have it but I don't think everyone does. So, and Christian. <laughs> so if, if anybody has any questions about just the site and the site analysis that was just presented, then we'd be happy to address your questions now. Um, if otherwise we would move into talking about some of the potential activities that could be included here. This is this is our first list. So the, the design team, planning team, and Denver Parks and Recreation team. This is our combined kind of ideas for what might be good things to include at this park. Um, Hi, this is Scott Gilmore, Deputy Executive Director of Parks, just so everybody knows. Um, Hey, I just would want you guys to definitely take a look at the Derby lateral. I know that um, in your presentation, you mentioned it's a newer, a newer amenity that's been put in because of the development, but I, I don't believe that's accurate. Um, the Derby lateral provided water to the Rocky Mountain Arsenal to fill the lakes on the arsenal. Um, and it is an offshoot of the Highline Canal, which has been around since 1880. 
So I definitely would want to look at this and make sure that we have the accurate information of uh, when this uh, part of the canal was was actually built because the Highland Canal is actually a historic structure in the city. And so I definitely want to make sure that we're um, providing accurate information related to this, this drainage facility, but, but and its history that it, it served a very important purpose to the city, um, moving water through the city um, in the early, late 1880s and early 1900s. Thanks, Scott. Um, I'm gonna go back to the map. Gary, could you go back to the map? Uh, didn't mean to say that the, the Derby lateral was new. What's, uh, what's new is the drainage that's going through the park, which is the, the big drainage in green. The Derby lateral and the canal is there on the southwest corner of the site. And that is historic dating back to the 19th century, uh, very important lateral uh, as part of the Highline Canal development. And that is indeed a key feature that we will be paying attention to uh, in our planning. Thank you. Perfect. I, I just want people to know that this piece of land actually has a lot of historic um, significance to um, water and just the development of the city, especially this section of the city. Okay. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, with that, let's... Uh, page forward up to the activities area, potential activities. And I'm gonna turn it over to Carrie Liljegren, who's also with Stream Landscape Architecture. She's the project manager for this project. And she will tell you all about a lot of good ideas to consider. Carrie. Hi. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. It's great to see such a great turnout. Um, from all of you interested constituents. Um, we, this next portion is just to run through, as Paul had said, the full gamut of options, um, programming, amenities for this park. Um, of course, we can't build all of these things, but we, we really value your opinion. And um, so that is why we are specifically gonna run through all of these programming options um, and I'm sure there are ones we haven't thought of. And, and then you can, at the end of this presentation, go ahead and click on a link, we'll show you how, for a survey. And the survey options um, directly correspond to, to what I'm about to show you. So we value your opinion and hopefully um, we'll just kind of roll through these. A lot of these are very uh, self-explanatory, but um, I'll talk through them as needed. Um, this is a neighborhood park. so. A lot of the options we're showing you are very appropriate for uh, this size of park. It's not a regional park, um, but we want to uh, provide as much um, value to the community as possible. Uh, it's part of the reason why we kind of did that analysis of what are the recreational amenities that surround our site so that we are going to be designing for what the community needs um, that is maybe readily available within that, you know, mile, mile and a quarter radius. Um, so walking paths and running loops, we have met with the adjacent school and, and we understand that, um, that Girls on the Run is a program that's active at the school. And um, we wanna provide for the community, but also the adjacent school. So it's a balance. And so running, the idea of a running loop might facilitate um, cross country running groups for kids and such um, walking paths are always an essential feature of any park. Uh, we do have our drainage area um, and we wanna take full advantage of that. Um, that might mean a, a boardwalk, that might mean um, just, a, just a natural open space trail that's a soft surface trail um, because not everyone wants to walk or run on, um, on concrete. So we were just looking at different trail and circulation options within the park itself. Next, we're looking at gathering spaces. Um, what, what, is, what does the community want in terms of um, a small amphitheater space, flexible use? Uh, flexible use is gonna be key um, for providing 
you know, potential opportunities for performance, venue, um, small venue, um, but then also that those spaces could have dual function and could be flexible just as a plaza or gathering space um, within the community. Um, and then also just, just kind of what, what people really um, rely upon for their neighborhood parks, the picnic, the barbecue grills, shade shelters, um, spaces where they can um, potentially reserve for larger gatherings uh, with their family. Next, we're kind of looking at gardens and um, potential environmental um, education opportunities. Um, so community gardens, as Paul had noted, pretty close by at Marama Elementary, we have um, a very nice uh, community garden. Is that something that we would like to see on this site as well? Um, want your feedback on that. Um, with that drainage area, we, we do have an opportunity for interpretation and environmental education that could be not just for the school, but um, a key feature of the park um, that is a, an amenity for the, for the whole community. And a, a habitat garden, you know, potentially we could um, program it um, for garden space that is educational. In this case, you know, a butterfly garden, pollinator garden, um, ideas such as that. Next, we're kind of looking at play and whimsy, um, a playground. I know there are many playgrounds surrounding this site. Um, just wanted to kind of gauge everyone's feedback on, on the interests of playground and how, how large. And if you vote for playground and, and have a specific interest in nature play or, or, um, or other, you know, targeting inclusive play or certain age groups, please let us know. There are ways in the survey for you to add additional information. Uh, we're also including as, as one programming idea, um, a splash or in, uh, interactive water feature um, that might um, be an amenity, especially in the summertime um, for this community. And uh, public art, uh, this neighborhood park could be an opportunity for, um, for the community to represent itself through public art, whether it's um, murals or three-dimensional art. Um, it's an opportunity here for that. And we, we would like your feedback on how important that is to you. We can just, we're gonna kind of, kind of run through a couple of slides here, really focused on sports and activity. Um, the multi-use athletic field, as you had seen in the, um, the aerial imagery and the maps, um, there is an existing field as part of the school. We're looking at how we can build upon what the school has, um, but it would be just, especially given the size of, a, of an athletic field such as this, um, it'd be important for us to know whether an additional field is desired um, because that will account for a fair amount of, um, of the area that we have to work with for the park development. Uh, basketball courts, always popular. Again, that it is existing on the school property, but do we want more? Uh, tennis courts. Volleyball, um, so that could be a feature that's within um, a turf area. So if it's a sand course or, um, court, it can be um, within the turf area. As, as what's shown here. Uh, pickleball is very popular. Um, feedback on that would be appreciated. And then we were just looking at, um, you know, handball could be a great um, small feature within the park, but could add a lot of recreational value, uh, both with handball as a backstop for kids just to practice their soccer kicking. Um, and actually the wall itself could, could be a potential mural opportunity, public art opportunity, so. A uh, few other ideas, uh, a skate feature, maybe not, maybe not full on skate park because there is one very close by at, um, at the town center park. Um, but a couple skate spots, if you will, um, where kids can come and, and do a few tricks, um, maybe a small bike challenge course um, where kids can learn um, the bike challenge um, through their off-roading. Of course, some of these will require more uh, space than others. So we'll have to uh, gauge, you know, how people are voting versus how much space we have, but um, that's one idea. And then, you know, parkour is, is very popular and it's, um, 
we would uh, we have not seen nearby um, opportunities for that. Um, and is, if that's something of great value, we, we'd like to know that. Likewise, uh, disc golf. Um, disc golf requires a certain amount of area and we, that would need to be factored in, but um, we do have on the south side of our site a bit more um, open space potentially. So that might be able to be incorporated. Um, fitness stations um, have been very popular and uh, could be of great value. And then just general games um, such as horseshoes um, and small court games. And then lastly, um, you know, we, as you saw maybe in the, in the site analysis maps that Paul had shared, we do have actually a fair amount of topography, even though it's an, a large open site that might look level. Um, there could be an opportunity to um, create an overlook point, raise the grading up at its highest point. Um, so emphasize that, which could be um, an overlook point, And then in the, in the winter months could be a small sledding hill. Um, that I don't believe the community has nearby. Um, and then lastly, just kind of circling back on the environmental education idea, um, there could be a very, uh, very small outdoor classroom that would work very well with the um, these adjacent school site and uh, could just be a space for um, promoting environmental education in the community. Are there any questions? I guess we can get to questions. Laura, have you seen any questions come in through the chat? I think Mallory's getting it now. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll turn that one to Mallory. Sure. Yes, thank you. We It looks like we don't have very specific questions, but we do have some great input. We're getting a lot of input about some of the native uh, plantings here and some of the, um, the desires to keep some of those native plants. Um, so thank you so much for submitting some of that information so that we note that and we're aware of it as we as we look to make some improvements to this park and add some new amenities. So thank you. Um, we have some comments about um, the outdoor classroom being great for that ECE through eight um, kiddos at the KIPP building, um, as well as sledding being advantageous. Um, there's just a lot of appreciation for some of the comments that are coming in. Um, let's see, I'm reading one from Christina in terms of environmental education issues and safety on the west side of site, on the west side of the site near the drainage area. There's also some snakes that make their home, so that's something that we need to consider about some of the some of the wildlife that we we see on site. Um, also, some considerations to work with Denver Urban Gardens, so that's a great opportunity that we could look into. Um, so it looks like community gardens would be advantageous here. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's all of the comments that we received. So thank you so much for submitting those. These are very good considerations as we move forward. Hi, it's Scott again, Scott Gilmore. Um, okay. Hey, just FYI, there is a sledding hill at uh, Parkfield. Um, the, the, um, the orientation of it, though, makes it so it doesn't it doesn't hold snow very well. So it might be something you guys might want to look at, and it'd be nice to have a sledding hill that um, is a little better situated that would hold snow a little bit longer um, and after a snowstorm. So, um, but there is one there. There's also a little climbing boulder at the bottom of it, which wasn't a good location for that. So, um, you guys might want to just take a look at that. It's it's directly adjacent to the basketball courts at Parkville. That's great information. Thank you. I didn't realize that. Yeah, we'll take a look. Thank you, Scott. And it looks like, Victor, you have raised your hand. You have a question, and then maybe we can go to Megan after. Uh, more, It's more of a comment. Thank you. Everything is really organized and clear. I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, I live in a very uh, close proximity of this area, so I'm very excited. Uh, my wife, um, and my mother-in-law live with me and they just wanted me to mention a couple of things that we like because we do love uh, Parkfield Lake. Uh, it's really awesome. So like they like the trees, the bushes, the benches, the flowers. And uh, I, a lot of the slides that were just presented like the community garden, um, maybe the plaza gathering space. Um, I'm a little bit biased. I can't believe there was an actual handball court there because 
I, I'm a big handball player from New York City and, and Ohio. And so I saw that and that was super exciting, but I don't know if that's going to make it. Um, the, the pictures do seem to make the area look large. Um, I walk the area almost every day in a quick circle. Um, it's, the, you know, it's not that big of an area. So I don't see a whole lot of sports um, being fitted in, you know, as there is already a park and a soccer field there. But it would be nice to um, just, my personal suggestion is like an overlook, a bridge or some kind of walkway. That's just my idea. I know in Stapleton, there's like a, a walkway where you just walk up and it just curves and it's like a large overlook bridge. But thank you for your time. And if you have anything else, I can add more. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. That's very, very helpful information to provide. So I appreciate that. Um, let's go to Megan, because it looks like Megan has her hand raised. Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to mention some of the comments we've gotten for this area um, from our office is um, some sort of plaza space or like amphitheater space, even like a small one where you can like put on little plays or small concerts. I know there's housing there and and I know we're all conscious of noise and stuff, but that there are not many options for kind of small music gatherings, um, except for the Montbello Amphitheater and then the one in Green Valley Ranch. Um, and then the splash features we get a lot um, is kids really want that splash feature, you know, um, that other communities get. And I hear that one a lot. So I just wanted to mention those two. Great, thank you, Megan. Um, it looks like we have a few more comments um, that have been brought up. Um, some more comments about some pollinator enrichment and native plant biodiversity would be great. Um, there's a question about dog parks. Um, so we can, we can explore that option a little bit more. We do have the benefit of having a dog park master plan that we can look to and see, you know, can look at the the considerations of that plan and see if it fits here um, and see if it makes sense. So we'll look into that. Um, also, we have a comment about um, looking into a space that takes into consideration uh, the surrounding nature, like the park over in Painted Prairie. Um, and just that a comment that you love the playground builder, Beanstalk Builders. Um, so we'll look at that. And also, um, there's a question about whether there's a survey geared towards the youth in the area um, so that we can hear what, what they would like to have. Um, we've definitely made an effort to reach out to the surrounding schools um, as a part of kind of this meeting and our um, survey efforts, but we will look at different ways to, to approach youth, the youth perspective and kind of get their input as this is adjacent to a school and they will use this quite often. So thank you for that comment as well. And I believe that's, that's all the comments we've received right now. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for all that. Um, and then all the feedback we'll receive through the um, surveys as well. Um, so just to recap um, where we, uh, where we are and where we're going. Um, this was our first public meeting, that's today. Um, our second public meeting um, will be in April. We do not have a date set just yet, um, but we will be gathering all the feedback we're receiving um, from all the various sources through chats and all um, that people have said in this meeting as well as the survey um, and aggregating that information. And, and, and we're really um, going to evaluate it based upon budget and needs of, uh, of the community, but also the, the site constraints um, and weighing all those factors, we will come up with um, some design concepts um, and we will prepare those for that second meeting and share that with you. Um, after that point, um, as Paul had said, we will then be narrowing um, down to one program, programming and design option and um, refine that and then uh, wrapping up the master plan in August. Gary, right, it looks like we have a couple hands raised. Do you yeah. mind if we jump into that really quick? Um, sure. Um, we'll start with you. Yeah. 
Uh, hola, buenas tardes. Uh, mi pregunta es, uh, ¿cómo, ¿cuál es el plan de mantener el parque uh, bien alumbrado? Okay, it looks like we have a question about, um, I believe you were asked, it's, it's difficult to hear you. You were asking to keep the park illuminated. Is that correct? Sí. Yep, lighting. Um, lighting, we, we can definitely look into lighting at this park. Um, we're always taking into consideration its proximity to the surrounding residents. Um, we don't want it to impact uh, residents negatively, but we also want to be conscious of uh, safety considerations. So that is something that we will look into and um, kind of balance the lighting needs for the safety purposes as well, while taking into consideration that, that impact ah, surrounding development. Por, ¿Por qué? Porque uh, hay varios parques que aunque haya a uh, casas cercas, hay ciertos pedazos que están muy oscuros por los árboles y en esas partes ha habido violencia de jóvenes o gente, no importa si son jóvenes o grandes, pero uh, mi pregunta es esa de por qué, por qué uh, van a esperar a, a ver qué se va a hacer. Yeah, it's it's always a consideration that we need to we need to balance kind of the needs for safety and lighting in the area as well as some of the plantings in the area. So um, that is something we will look into. I'm not aware of the 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 crime in this area, and so that is something that we will definitely look into as we're looking at some of the design impacts. So um, at, I would like you to, if you can, um, definitely participate in the survey. And um, as we move forward with certain design concepts, we can we can explore some of the the designs and the impacts that you you see might be um, something of concern as it relates to the safety concerns and that lighting and how how the the area is laid out with some of the trees and thing and other plantings. Gracias. De nada. It looks like we have another hand raised. Uh, Witty, do you have a question or a comment? Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah, my question is, so I live right here in the neighborhood. I'm actually just due east of the school on Walden Street. And um, I know that a park has been talked about for quite a number of years. I have neighbors that are original um, uh, homeowners here lived here for seven years and I'm just kind of curious the anticipated completion date of this park. Are you asking about the anticipated date that it would be constructed? Yeah, that, that it would be that it would be completed for people to be able to to use the park. What yes. is that date? We anticipate having the funding available in, for actual implementation of the plan, so actual construction of the, the plan in 2024. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the funding wouldn't be available until 2024? Yes, that's, that's when we have the funding for actual implementation. So right now we're in the master planning process, um, which will take us into the fall. Um, then we will have funding in 2022 for further design. So we'll actually have the design um, drawings in place and then funding for implementation in 2024. And how long is it anticipated to, that it's gonna take to build the park to completion? That's difficult to say. It all depends on the, the concept that we reach and the, the improvements that we'll make. Um, so it's, it's hard to tell at this phase um, since we're so early in the process. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Megan, it looks like you have a question. 
I, I just wanted to expand on this. This was one of the parks that wasn't picked though for the Go Bond initiative that we did a few years ago. And that's why the funding is a little harder um, to, to have for this park because we did have GBR pool in 56. Is, is that correct? Am I remembering correctly? I believe that's correct because we don't have the bond funding for this one. Um, I'm not sure the background that led up to that, but I believe you're, you're correct, Megan. Yeah, so I just wanted to expand for the resident that the city went through a pretty um, extensive project of bond project selection. And we put this and another park, I think in GVR on the, the bond options, but unfortunately they weren't selected through the city process. And so that's kind of pushed the funding out just to give a little more background. Thank you, Megan. Um, Elise, it looks like you have your hand raised. Do you have a question or comment? Hi there, this is Elise Martinez and I'm actually with the Highline Canal Conservancy. Um, and I was curious about the Derby Trail, excuse me, Derby Lateral Trail Connection um, and the estimated completion date of that um, connection between where the existing trail is and where it would basically cut across the park. Um, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know if anybody else on the call. I know we had um, Jessica Anderson on the call. Um, Jessica, are you aware of any plans to build out that trail in terms of the, the timeline? I don't know that, but I can look into it and get back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looks like that's all the questions we have right now. All right. Well, as, as you can see on the screen, um, we have a survey. Um, there are a number of options for you guys to access the survey. I believe um, it's getting put up on the chat now, maybe. Um, you guys can give me a heads up when that's when that's up. That's a fast way for you all to just click on that and go ahead and take the survey. Um, we are also going to follow up with an email um, to all of you that received this notice directly through email um, with that same link to the survey. Um, and also it can, in the next day or so, it, it will be, it can be accessed through denvergov.org um, park projects, which is the general information website for this, for this park. Uh, we are looking ahead to two weeks. Um, so the survey will close, won't be open forever, um, but we're um, allowing a two week window um, for feedback. I believe it ends on um, the fifth, Friday the fifth, is that correct, Laura? Yes, set to close on the 5th. Okay, great. And that will allow us to then do a comprehensive view of all the information that has come in and, um, and go ahead and get to work on design. Is, it, is the link in the chat yet? Yes. Great, okay. And then just um, kind of a final call for questions. If people have them, raise your hand or put it in the chat. Yeah, maybe we can just stick around. We won't log off um, until 6.30. So you're, I mean, I think we've pretty much run through everything and really thank you all for coming tonight and take the survey and share the survey is probably our last message, right? Right. Yes. Cool. Hi, this is Megan too. I was gonna do one little plug that if you haven't seen that, um, Sprouts is coming to Green Valley Ranch. It's very exciting. Uh, they announced this week, so there's a bunch of articles out, but figured while we had so many Green Valley Ranch residents on, I'd mention it. That's great. If, uh, if my chat function is not working, uh, what's, the, what's another way I can get that link to the survey? Just wanna make sure I do get an opportunity to participate. 
Victor, if you um, can uh, Log I don't out. Know, put your, I'm like, cause I can get an email. Oh, actually, how about this? The Facebook event, I will post the survey in there, the next door post. I'll post the survey in the comments there. Um, if you're not on either of those, then check our website, um, denvergov.org slash park projects. The link for the survey will be up there tomorrow. Okay. Or, or uh, the, the address is right there and you could just jot that down. You can go there right now if you want. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Good stuff. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you so your, much. Your, your feedback. We look forward to working with you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit end. Um, so if you're still hanging around, um, I am recording the chat, so we have all of that, but also feel free to reach out to us. Bye everybody, thanks.